They continued walking the rest of the way to where Bartholomew possibly might be, and Melody walked over to Chris's part of the formation. How much do you know about dreams? He whispered to him. As much as Dexter knows about distraction. Why? He responded. Well, last night, I ended up sleeping, and I had this dream that was unlike anything I recall experiencing. What was it about? I was in a raised town that looked almost like Anasola. I started out walking around the area, and I came across judgmental people at every turn. All of a sudden, I was running all over town and came across people at every corner shouting stuff like, You're worthless, and your head is dragging you down, or why do you even bother? Well, that sounds a lot like a nightmare. Well, it didn't exactly stop there. I stopped at the outskirts of town and I saw a man. Actually, his back was facing toward me. He was tall, had black hair with a river of blonde down the middle, and, from what I could tell, seemed relaxed and focused at the same time. I wasn't certain if he looked familiar, but I felt I could trust him. I didn't say anything, but he said, I'll always be there for you, as if he knew I was behind him. However, before he could turn around and I could see his face, I woke up. The innocent ginger seemed intrigued by what the anarchist described. As they continued walking, he giggled out of volume where the only person that could hear, hear it was her. Sounds like you described Jonathan, he mentioned. Apart from the fact that I've spoken to him the most out of all four of you guys, why would I dream of him? Why would I dream of Jonathan? She questioned. There was a saying about a certain strong emotion that is described as not looking directly at each other, but looking together in the same direction. After digging deep into her memory, Melody's eyes grew wide as she quickly turned her head toward Chris. You don't mean... Hey, I can feel it going on, he said as he gave her a smug look. That's ridiculous. Just because I feel comfortable around Jonathan, I've spoken to him the most, and I can understand him, doesn't automatically mean that I'm falling in love with him. She said faintly so no one else can hear her. Well, there was a sp definitely a spark between you two last night. You saw us last night? As I was going to get a drink of water, yes. I hope you're aware of how grotesque you sound right now. Besides, even if I did care, you're all princes and I'm... I'm me. Chris looked in front of him to where in the formation Jonathan was walking and said, well, that doesn't seem to be a problem for him. Melody groaned while annoyed and walked away from Chris's part of the formation. No matter what your mind says, the heart always caves. He pretty near shouted and, just and she just ignored it. She walked over to the front of the formation and became fully aware of where she was when she was greeted by, Is everything alright? from Jonathan. Yes, everything's fine. I just had a bit of struggle dealing with Chris. He's definitely innocent enough to be a friend to the mystical wildlife. When we were younger, we actually used to call Chris Elfling. Jonathan chuckled at the mentioned memory. Melody looked over toward Jonathan as he was chuckling. Before I forget, did you actually sleep? He asked her. Oh, I did sleep, but the images within the threshold were more of a blur as opposed to anything else. She lied. Speaking of last night, I keep thinking about that moment when we were both awake. Would you call me crazy if I said I really enjoyed that? I wouldn't call you crazy for that, she responded softly while gazing at him. We should have nights like that more often, he chuckled. Yeah, I mean, if I consider staying in on a solo. You haven't decided if you're heading back to see her, Dean? I'm still up in the air. On one hand, I've been well adapted to Anna Sola after all these years. On the other hand, Sea Hardin is still my home. Let me know when you decide, alright? Melody nodded and noticed that Jonathan's hand was reaching toward her own hand again. As she took note, she quickly walked in front of Jonathan to take the lead of the formation and to tell herself that Chris was wrong. As she walked faster, she looked back at Jonathan and shouted, Continuing straight forward, right? Yeah, straight forward, and we'll be there in a matter of hours, he responded. Jonathan looked over at Melody as she walked to the very front of the formation and couldn't help but notice she had an expression that was a mixture of anger and sadness as she picked up the pace. Until the prior night, he knew that she was the type of person that had sorrowed deep within her that, when let out, would be expressed aggressively to blend with anger, but he never thought that she would actually express passive sorrow. 
She did her best to not look behind her and was focusing on anything else she could think of. However, every time she would focus on thoughts related to the idea of returning to see Hardeen, her mind would drift to the knowledge that there was little chance that she would ever see Jonathan again. She knew that it wouldn't exactly hurt her to be around him for a little while longer if given the choice. He was smart, understanding for someone with or without the enchantment, talented, and he made her feel some kind of comfort that was different from the comfort she felt around her few friends in Sea Hardeen. She mentally slapped herself in the face and convinced herself not to let Chris's statements get to her. Melody looked down and felt that her stomach was feeling uneasy. She changed it to the excuse that the fish she ate that morning was probably slightly spoiled. Then she kept walking and surrounded herself with multiple thoughts scrambling in her brain.